Valve has just announced their new portable gaming device, the Steam Deck, which is powered by an AMD RDNA 2 based APU. There's a lot to unpack here, and one use case in particular seems very interesting to me. Let's have a quick look at this potentially disruptive device. If you want to expand your knowledge in computation, programming, math or science, there's no better way than by interacting with real-world examples. And today's sponsor, Brilliant, offers the best way to learn online, with fun and accessible interactive puzzles and exercises that challenge you, but also help you understand things step by step when you get them wrong. Whether you are looking to learn computer science, or brush up on the basics of math and logic, or delve into topics like cryptocurrencies, Brilliant helps you learn while doing and solving problems in real time. I've often recommended Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course to people who ask me where they should start learning about computation. This course explains complex topics like parallelism, Amdahl's Law, or concurrency in an easy-to-understand manner. There's also the Introduction to Neural Networks course, which I highly recommend, and even an Astrophysics course if you are looking for proof that the Earth really is round. So check out brilliant.org slash cortex you can sign up for free and the first 256 people who do will get 20% off an annual premium subscription link in the description so over the last couple of years, I've been releasing videos discussing the disruptive potential of APUs. Once APUs get powerful enough to run AAA games at acceptable frame rates, then entry-level and even mid-range GPUs become mostly irrelevant. To add to this, we now have FSR being released as open source, which will greatly contribute to its wide adoption. I played around with the open source FSR samples for DX12, and I'm really impressed with how great the overall image looks particularly when you crank up sharpening, something that didn't seem to be available in Godfall and Terminator Resistance when I tested them in my video last week. The Steam Deck, just announced by Valve, features precisely an AMD APU with RDNA 2 graphics, so it seems like the perfect candidate to take advantage of something like FSR to make running demanding games on a low-power APU a reality. Looking at the hardware specs, we see a Zen 2 CPU with 4 cores and A3 threads that can boost to 3.5 GHz, and an RDNA 2 GPU with 8 compute units which can boost to 1.6 GHz for up to 1.6 teraflops of performance, so that's roughly around say a GTX 1050 from 2016. That might not sound like a lot of graphical horsepower, but the screen resolution it's targeting is 1280 by 800 and of course with FSR now enabling much higher frame rates without compromising too much on the image quality, I think this should run even AAA games comfortably. I suspect that on the unit's 7-inch screen, one would have a hard time telling the difference between native and FSR. Unfortunately, the 16x10 panel is 60Hz only, which to me is probably the one significant negative point of this product. The display is touchscreen, so you can use an on-screen keyboard. The APU will go up to 15 watts, so it should last a fairly long time on battery. A Steam ramp stated that you can run Portal 2 for 4 hours on battery, and even longer if you limit the FPS to 30, although I'm not sure what sort of lunatic would do that. For 2D games, you can probably get 8 hours of gameplay out of the deck. There's 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM shared between CPU and GPU. I don't recall seeing LPD5 on an x86 system before, so looking at the AMD leaked roadmap, this looks to be Van Gogh. There are 3 storage options, 64 gigabytes of EMM, 256 gigabytes of PCIe Gen 3 NVMe and a 512 gigabyte high-speed NVMe, also Gen 3. Prices seem a bit steep to me considering the specifications. $400 for 64 gigs of internal storage seems excessive, as you'll have to get a chunky microSD card to store a decent amount of games. With games taking up as much space as they do today, I really don't see 64 gigs getting you very far. The 256 gigabyte at $530 
also seems excessive and the 512 gigabyte model at $650 runs into the same problem as most of these units. At this price you might as well just buy a laptop. Feels to me like all the models are $100 too expensive. I personally like the design of the unit but that's a subjective thing of course. Seems similar to the switch form factor. There are a ton of buttons including two shoulder buttons and four back buttons so this should be a dream for emulation of old systems. Notably there are two trackpads for playing first person shooters or RTS type games. It remains to be seen how well these will work. There are built in microphones so you can use the DAC for multiplayer chat or for voice over IP apps. It's Wi-Fi only but I imagine you can pair it with your phone. Assuming that option is available in the new version of SteamOS that the device runs on so perhaps using Bluetooth you can have the unit connected on the go. I'm not 100% sure on that though. But what grabs me about this device is the fact that you can dock it and use it as a regular PC. This is in fact a PC and you'll be able to connect it to a regular USB dock that has Ethernet, HDMI etc and plug it into a monitor. It will run games from the Epic Store or anything really that you'd run on a Linux based PC. So when you consider all of that, I think the $400 model starts to make some sense if you look at it as a replacement for your PC. I've discussed this concept in the past of having a device that you can dock and undock and use it for gaming on the go but also as your main work and entertainment PC at home. And I think the deck is the closest we've come to that reality. One interesting aspect of this endeavor is that SteamOS is free for anyone to use on their own similar devices. So that means if there's demand, we might see other manufacturers creating their own Steam Deck like devices that run on the same platform. Perhaps some ingenious designer out there will be able to create something that's both usable and that actually fits in one's pocket. There are a bunch of other features like a gyroscope, haptics and a USB-C port with DisplayPort 1.4 that can do up to 8K at 60Hz or even 4K at 120Hz on an external monitor or TV. Again with FSR there will be some cases where even the modest 8 compute unit GPU will give you the performance to run that. On the Steam Deck website there's some footage of the unit running Doom Eternal which looks pretty smooth. Obviously it remains to be seen at what settings it was running at and there's footage of the docked mode where the player is running Crusader Kings 3 on an external display and then all taps to a browser window while using the deck itself as a secondary monitor for the Steam app. One could imagine undocking the deck and taking it to the living room to plug it into a large TV and watching a series or movie or something like that. To me this one device that does all you need and lets you dock it for expanded functionality is where I see the PC headed, especially when you consider how expensive it's becoming to be a part of the PC master race. Just today I got word that AMD has risen the bomb kit costs to AIBs, so that's the ASICs and the memory that AMD sells to their partners and Nvidia has done the same. In fact this is the second time that both companies have raised bomb costs to AIBs this gen alone. While prices seem to be stabilizing, I'm not sure if that will last long considering these price increases. So when you consider all of that, then I think devices like the DAC might be the future for PC gaming. Is the Steam DAC the device that will disrupt the market? I doubt it, mostly because of the high price and the still too large to be portable form factor. But this is definitely a sign of things to come. As APUs become more powerful and now with upscaling techniques like FSR, it seems that the APU revolution is not too far off. This video is made possible by my awesome patrons. Support independent tech journalism and consider joining my Patreon today to get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server where you can talk to me directly and join a community of welcoming like-minded enthusiasts. If you can't contribute financially then please give this video a like and share it with friends as that really helps. Thanks for watching and until the next one.